Hello and welcome to News Hour on TV. Today is Wednesday, 6th of September 2023, and it's equivalent to 24th of Safar, 1445, after Hijra. The headlines I will break all barriers for investors. Tinubu assures President Shopo, heavy security as Tarabuno decides Atiku obese petitions against Tinubu. Lagos Casina, Sokoto workers shun NLC strike grounds Abuja states. On international scene, UAE announces $4.5 billion in African clean energy investments and in Sport 2023 World Cup, rigged to help Messi and Argentina win, says Van Gogh. And those were the headlines and for details and more of the stories, I am Rukayat Sani Ibrahim. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu yesterday said all barriers to invest will be dismantled by his administration to rekindle confidence in Nigeria's economy. He emphasized that the country will soon become destination of choice for investors because of measures being put in place to protect domestic and foreign investment. President Tinubu gave the assurance in New Delhi, India during his meeting with the chairman and exec chief executive officer of Hinduja Group of Companies, Mr. Prakash Hinduja. He assured investors that all bottlenecks in pending investments will be removed under his watch, adding that a conducive environment will be guaranteed in Nigeria. The Hinduja group of companies is conglomerate with a total asset portfolio exceeding $100 billion. Following the meeting, billionaire Indian businessman proposed an automobile manufacturing deal with Nigeria. According to a statement by his special advisor on media and publicity, Ajure Ingalele, the president received the Indian industrialists within 90 minutes of his arrival in India for G20 summit. There was heavy security deployment at the presidential election petition tribunal and other flashpoints and dark spots in Abuja on Tuesday, out of the delivery of the judgment on the election petitions challenging the election of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu today, Wednesday. This was as the supporters of the People's Democratic Party standard bearer Atiku Abubakar, Labour Party candidate LP Peter Obi, and President Tinubu awaited the verdict with earnest expectation. Supporters of the petitioners have been exchanging brickbats online, even as they express optimism that the ruling will favor their candidates. In preparation for the judgment, scores of armed riot policemen, Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, and other security operatives in plain clothes were deployed at strategic locations in the Federal Capital Territory FCT in a bid to prevent a breach of law and order that might arise after the judgment. The judgment will be delivered by the chairman of the tribunal, Justice Haruna Tsamani, assisted by other members of the panel Justice Stephen Ada, Mansurat Bolaji Yusuf, Moses Ugo, and Abba Muhammad. The proceedings will be held at the Court of Appeal, Three Arms Zone, Abuja. The Chief Registrar, Court of Appeal, Headquarters, Omar Bangari had disclosed in a statement on Monday that the tribunal verdict will be delivered on Wednesday and aired live on television stations. The strike called by the Nigerian Labour Congress to protest the failure of the federal government to provide palliatives following the forced subsidy removal Tuesday grounded economic and commercial activities in several states, but workers in Lagos, Sokoto and Katsina states not the labor action. Banks and other financial institutions and the civil service in the three states, as well as Delta, Bayelsa and Ogun, did not comply with the NLC directive to shut down services as they attend to their customers. But the two-day strike, which commenced on Tuesday, paralyzed activities in the Federal Capital Territory and some states with banks, ministries, agencies and departments shut to the public. Also, workers and various power firms under the aegis of the National Union of Electricity Employees Tuesday joined the industrial action as the, as the action disrupted the supply of electricity across the country. Power distribution companies, however, begged their customers for the disruption. The NLC leadership had said the two-day warning strike was a preparation for a total shutdown which will start in 21 days. The decision was taken at the end of its National Executive Council meeting, which was held last Friday. The Director of Works of Mariga local government area of Niger State, al Haji Yakubu Bala, has been killed by terrorists three days after he was abducted. It was learned that the director was abducted with 23 orders over the weekend from Mariga town. It was gathered that the terrorists demanded 50 million naira ransom, which his family paid. The sister of the deceased, Hajia Hadizat Abdullahi, disclosed that the late director 
was in his room with his two wives, one of whom was heavily pregnant when the terrorists invaded his house. Abdullah explained that relations of four others kidnapped were able to contribute two million naira each and took to the abductors in the forest before their family members were released. According to her, the released victims disclosed that her brother was tied to a tree and the terrorist broke his two legs before he died, adding that they were told that he was buried in a shallow grave in the forest. She lamented that her brother left behind two wives and ten children, saying that the family are having a hard time coming to terms with his death. Efforts to hear from the State Police Command, Public Relations Officer, DSP Wasu Abiodun, proof abortive. The Department of State Services have arrested some officials of the Nasara State Emergency Management Agency and their accomplice for allegedly diverting palliatives meant for vulnerable citizens. The suspects were accused of selling the palliatives in the modern market in Lafia, among others. A statement on Tuesday by the DSS spokesperson, Peter Afunanya, said the services had recovered some of the items after an investigation into the matter. Afnanya, who noted that similar operations were ongoing in other states of the Federation, called on citizens that have information on such incidents in their locations to report to security agencies. Justice Usman Malam Abba of the Kano State High Court on Tuesday set aside the suspension of a former governor of Kano State and presidential candidate of the new Nigeria People's Party, NNPP, in the 2023 election. Musa Rabi Ukonkwaso by his founding national chairman Dr. Boniface Ane Bonam and National Publicity Secretary Major Agbo and 16 others. While restraining them from parading themselves as national officers or leaders of the party pending the hearing and determination of the motion of notice, he also restrained the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, from recognizing the purported suspension pending the hearing and determination of the motion on notice. Newsmen report that on August 29, 2023, the members led by NNPP chieftains Annie Bonham and Abu suspended Kwankwaso for six months on the allegation of hobnobbing with politicians outside the party. The Annie Bonham and Major Group, which controls the NNPP Board of Trustees, said material evidence in public affirm that Kwankwaso was involved in anti-party activities in various meetings and political discussions with President Bola Ahmed Tinubu then candidate of the All Progressives Congress, his People's Democratic Party counterpart Atiku Abubakar, and candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi. The Inspector of Police, AG IGP Olukayode Adiolu Egbetokun, has ordered the posting and redeployment of seven Deputy Inspectors General of Police to various departments following the promotion of the senior officers to the rank of DIGs by the Police Service Commission. Consequently, DIG Balachuroma has been redeployed to head the Department of Finance and Administration, DIG Frank Emekamba, to the Department of Training and Development, and DIG Habu Esani to head the Force Intelligence Bureau. Others are DIG Usman D. Nokoko to the Department of Logistics and Supply, DIG Daniel Sokari Pedro to the Department of Information and Communication Technology, DIG Ibrahim Sani Ka Oji to the Department of Research and Planning, and the EIG, Ede Ayuba Ekpeji, to head the Department of Operations. Similarly, the IGP approved the posting of AIG Oladimeji Yomi Olare Waju as the first secretary. AIG Yakini Adu Ayoku is to head the police mobile force. AIG Idris the Bandauda is posted to Zoom 16 Yanagua, and AIG Oyediran Adesoye. Oyeyemi is to head the police cooperative and AIG Benjamin Okolo Nebio Lisa to, to post as AIG Department of ICT. A statement by the First Public Relations, ACP Muiwa Adejobi, said the IGP charged the newly posted and redeployed senior officers to entrench professionalism in their respective departments, commands, and formations while prioritizing human security and people centric policy and services. Armed robbers on Tuesday morning invaded three communities in Ibadan, the Oyo state capital. Two robbers were said to have carted away phones, piece of jewelry and other items. The affected communities include Alaja, Sirika and Ogogo on the new Ibadan Ojo Expressway in the Akinyele local government area of the state. 
One of the community leaders, Raji Kazim, who confirmed the incident to our correspondent, said the armed robbers came in the middle of the night and robbed some houses. Efforts to reach the state police public relations officer, PPRO, Adewale Osifeso, were not successful as of press time. And on the foreign scene, the United Arab Emirates announced Tuesday $4.5 billion in clean energy investments in Africa during a Landman Climate Summit. Hosted by Kenya, that is aimed at attracting funding for efforts to combat global warming. Sultan Al Jaber, who heads the government owned renewable energy from Mazdar, the UAE's national oil company ADNOG, and the COP28 climate talks, who disclosed these, warned that if Africa loses, the UAE loses. Heads of state and government and industry leaders are coming thousands of attendees at the Nairobi summit where Africa is promoting its potential as a clean energy powerhouse. The Africa Climate Summit will be followed by the COP28 summit later this year in Dubai, which is expected to feature competing agendas for the world's energy future. Al Jaber said the investment aimed to develop 15 gigawatts of clean power by 2030 and catalyze at least an additional $12.5 billion from multilateral public and private sources. The three-day event in Nairobi, which began Monday, is billed as bringing together African leaders to define a shared vision for green development on the diverse continent of 1.4 billion people. And in sports, former coach of the Dutch national team, Louis van Gaal, has claimed that the 2022 World Cup in Qatar was premeditated to help Lionel Messi and Argentina win the tournament. Argentina defeated the Netherlands 4-3 on penalties in the quarterfinals of the World Cup, with Van Gaal in charge in his third stint with the team. Speaking at the Air Vice Award on Tuesday night, the 72-year-old told Dutch outlet NOS that the tournament was made for the Argentine team. He explained that the game was premeditated if one compares how Argentina and Netherlands got their goals and how some Argentina players overstepped the mark without being punished. Messi scored a brace in the finals as Argentina defeated France 4-2 on penalties. And with the sport news, we've come to the end of our bulletin for today. You can follow us on our social media handles at Facebook, Instagram and Twitter at UNT Radio FM TV respectively. You can also watch us live on the satellite decoder Border Sat, which has been watched in about 38 countries of the world free. You can also stream and watch us live on our YouTube channel at Unity FM TV. I am Rukayat Sani Ibrahim. Thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of our program. Do have yourself a lovely day.